Hello, my name is Brayden, and today I'll be premiering a new show on my channel called The History of Westeros and Beyond. I'll be using the handy source that George R. R. Martin has given us that is The World of Ice and Fire. I'll be starting off with the history of the Vale. Although it is not one of the most well-known areas of Westeros, I'll be starting with it because it has a simpler history than places like the North and the Riverlands, which will make it a little easier on me in the editing process, as this will be the first video of this type I'll be doing. So, without further delay, let us begin. The Vale of Arryn is a long and wide fertile valley completely surrounded by tall and beautiful mountains. There is not much history of what the Vale was like before the Andals invaded, so that is where we shall start, with the Andals arriving in the Vale. Back when the Andals first arrived, the Vale was thinly populated by the First Men, and although they fought valiantly, the First Men were outnumbered and outmatched, because where the First Men had bronze weapons and armor, the Andals had steel weapons and iron armor, but that is not the only reason the Andals had an easy time conquering the First Men. See, in those times, the Vale was just a bunch of petty kingdoms, each with their own king, and when the Andals arrived, some of these kings thought that they could use the Andals to fight their feuds. Some kings, such as Daywind Shell and John Brightstone, both who fancied themselves King of the Fingers, actually paid the Andal warlords to cross the sea. Instead of fighting for these men, the Andals tortured and beheaded Brightstone and burned Shell alive in his own wooden long haul. After this, a knight named Corwin Corbray took Brightstone's daughter for his wife and made Shell's wife his bedwarmer, and also named himself Lord of the Five Fingers. To the south was the harbor town of Galtown on the Bay of Crabs, which was ruled by Osgood Shet. Oscar Chet took the title of King of the True Men, which apparently went back 10,000 years to the dawn of the age, which I'll cover in another video. Now, Osgood and his ancestors had been waging war on and off for centuries against the neighboring house, and this will sound familiar to most Game of Thrones fans, Royce. At that time, Yarrick Royce, the sixth of that name, was the King of Runestone, and he proved to be the most formidable foe to the Shets so far, defeating them in several battles and driving them inside the walls of Gulltown. Feeling humiliated, King Osgood turned to the Andals for help in recovering the lands he had lost. Hoping to avoid the fate of Brightstone and Shell, he helped them marrying his daughter to an Andal knight named Gerald Grafton, and marrying Grafton's eldest and youngest daughters to him and his son respectively would keep the Andals from repeating what they had done to Brightstone and Shell. With this alliance in place, Osgood was able to win his victory, but not without a cost, for he himself had lost his life in battle. It was rumored afterwards that Sir Gerald was the one who had struck him down. And on his return to Galltown, Sir Gerald Grafton took the crown, dispossessing Osgood's son of his father's throne. The young Shet was then confined to his bedchamber until he got Sir Gerald's daughter with child, after which he vanishes from the history books. When some of the people of Galltown started a rebellion, King Gerald put it down swiftly and brutally. The streets of Galltown ran red with blood on that day. The slain were then thrown into the bay to feed the crabs. In the years following Gerald's ascension to the throne, he remained unchallenged, for as it turned out, King Gerald was a wise and clever king, so much so that Galltown prospered greatly, becoming the only city in all the Vale. Not all the first men, kings, and lords were daft enough to invite the Andals into their castles and long halls, which we will discover in the next video when we take a look at the first men's final push against Andal supremacy in the Vale. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like so I know you want more. And if you guys have anything to say about the content or the way I present it, please leave a comment. I make these videos for you, the viewer, and I want to make sure they are as enjoyable as possible. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.